morning, morning. It's super awesome to see everyone today. I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Marcel Van Lout here, who is a phenomenal artist. And we'll be talking about his art and the journey that he's gone through and kind of dipping his toes in the crypto space. So thank you, Marcel, so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You're the first person who pronounced my name correct. So <laughs> Yay. this is a good start for us then. Yeah. We're doing well. Thank you for having me. It's very good to see you here. And so to get started, because I know that you are historically more of a traditional artist um and you know the whale community is definitely kind of big in the crypto space so i would like to give people a background on your art and your journey getting here could you tell us you know where you first got an interest in art and what the progression was that you took professionally well um as a kid i draw a lot and um yeah, I lost that a little during the high school thing, etc. But eight years ago, when my oldest son was born, Otis, I um, I had a disease. I, I don't want to start bad, but um, yeah, I was paralyzed for, uh, I think, one year. I had a, a disease called Guillain-Barre, and I had to recover for almost a year, I guess. And during recovery, they asked me to train my muscle uh, strength in my hands and I, I could do anything. I could practice with, um, yeah, a fitness, etc. But I also had the laptop and the photos of my older son. And then I start practicing uh, editing uh, artworks of my son and Photoshopping. So that was the start. <laughs> uh, um, yeah looks like a mistake but that was the start of uh, my journey my art journey till now actually well and that is definitely quite the start of a journey because that is you know having a condition like that is a huge thing to overcome and that's something that you know i've heard of before so being able to you know work with the photoshop and kind of move toward you know the recovery like that's inspiring and so I guess you know, that kind of leads into the next question is what was your biggest source of inspiration? You know, and um, have you found that to change over time? Being in daily life, um, I like I like nature, uh, all kind of animals. You see it a lot in my work, the combination with humans and animals. Uh, but also I think, um, yeah, my kids, my children, uh, the way they see the world, uh, how they uh, fantasize things. And uh, that's a big inspiration for me also. And I always say my own imagination. I think that's the, the biggest source of, uh, of, of the inspiration, yeah. I'm definitely looking at your work and I'm gonna get that pulled up on the screen here for everyone as well. Once my screen participates, I'll link your Instagram in the chat for everybody too. But it is super inspirational looking at all of these pieces that you've got here. So here is your Instagram. And we can see, as you mentioned, that you have you know, a lot of the animals, you have a lot of, as we scroll through, you'll also see children. There's Paris Hilton, who Correct. is also yeah. part of the whale community. So that's a really exciting thing, being able to see all of these pieces and kind of where you've come from. And on that note, we've you know kind of looked in your website and it's noted that your style can be described as modern surrealism. So what inspired you to follow that particular art path? I don't know exactly how it works. I think that's the, that's the way it reflects my mind and um, yeah, I like the style of combining the old uh, Renaissance time, for example, and combine it with um, yeah, the way we see things now on a surrealistic way. And uh, yeah, it's more than surrealism. It is absolutely magical. Thank you. I know that uh, we've got the links posted for your Instagram, and as people scroll, they'll actually notice that some of the links are animated which is a really interesting thing because as it is like looking at 
the pieces and let's see we'll bring that up again so that way we can see like even some of the images that do not have animation it appears that there is actually motion happening in the piece just because of the composition so do you find that in your work are there some images that just work better as still where you don't think they need the extra animation or how do you determine whether or not you're animating well i was very excited when this whole NFT uh, door slammed open and uh, I was just busy with the physical world and now I had I had the options for uh, to work with more animation of course um, I think a still uh, image uh, not all my works need uh, animation because I don't think that suited suited it um, but some and some um, pictures need a lot of animation because you have the pop because yeah, this one, this is Vireo. But not too much, I think, because otherwise it distracts. So it's finding a balance between. So have, yeah, it'd have to be a balance, yeah. Yeah, so you've got, and you know, and it's amazing because looking at these, you know, you have the pieces that are physical, you know, like we've got on the screen here, you're standing next to it, like it's a, it's a big piece. But then you've also got digital, and that's a really interesting sort of, you know, combination, especially moving, as you mentioned, into the NFT space. Yeah, it was my vision from the beginning to um, work with high museum quality pieces and print it big and go for a handmade frame. And I thought my work from the beginning, it was suit with my work. And um, I think that's the same thing I want to do with in the NFT space to make it, yeah, to drop only exclusive pieces and not that much. Ooh, so that's an interesting thing. So you're looking at only exclusive pieces yeah. to get into the space. And I know that we've seen a lot of artists who, you know, come in and maybe do like exclusives or then they've got, you know, the open editions. And so that's a, a very fascinating thing to hear you know, the difference in theory there, but it makes sense given how exclusive your pieces are in real life. And you've done a lot, you know, you've got pieces that are in different galleries and you've got a book coming out, which we'll get to in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that, you know, as we were scrolling through Instagram, we we're seeing that you have pieces that, you know, you've kind of done on your own and also pieces that you've commissioned. Um, is there, a process when you're doing commissioned work that you use to find you know a good fit for accepting clients or you know how yeah, does that work? I think my commissioned work is very exclusive. I want to keep it exclusive and have to, fits really with the vision of the client. Um, I'm doing not although uh, everything what what comes in I um, don't accept everything because it has to fits with my art and um, lately I think most of my clients now, uh, they don't have a list of things they want to see. They say, just go, we trust on your vision and we like your work and yeah. We can take it to Paris Hilton, just because she's, you know, been such a big name in the space here in crypto. And like, here she is with this, a glorious piece. Like there's no other words, it's amazing. Thank you. So that's, fantastic and you know finding the right fit and i really like i don't know that i've seen a better portrayal of paris than this one here so i'm yeah. happy to thank you yeah. <laughs> it's amazing Actually, one of my biggest works to, uh, uh, until now i thought it was two meters high and one and a half in in, in wide so yeah wow so that's very big and and with that you know are you because you had mentioned doing Photoshop, but how are you actually completing these? You know, what materials are you using to make a piece that big? Um, we work in one of the, yeah, the best labs in Europe. Um, it's it's a printing studio, printing lab. Um, there we uh, print it on finite paper and then we're gonna mount it on DSEC. And DSEC is sort of museum quality acrylic. So it's, it's the best of the best. And uh, also the frame around it it's a whole experience. Oh, framing yeah. is definitely an experience. Yeah. That's for sure. 
So with them, um, you know, doing, you know, as you mentioned, client work, there's also a collaboration that you were working on recently. And let's take a look at that because I think that that is, you know, a kind of interesting, we've got the trailer here. This collaboration is a musical one, yes? It's coming soon, yeah. I've collabed, uh, I've teamed up with John Eubank. He's one of the biggest uh, music writers from the Netherlands. And um, I've made an animated version of my Flower series. And in this in this one is uh, the, the giraffe version. And we are planning to make uh, four animations uh, of the flower series with different animals and stories and we want to drop it as uh, se separated parts but all the movies together it will be one movie and John is composing uh, the music behind it and uh, we're working with the Amsterdam Orchestra to make it an ex exclusive number for it with, which, you, which you can see on the video this, this, this one is I think my biggest yeah biggest artwork so far that is amazing like being able to actually collaborate as a physical creator with an orchestra and have a series of your pieces turn into an audio experience like how does that feel that's something that you had imagined even you know a couple of years ago that you'd be able to do no no now this is, yeah this, this is really amazing this is a dream coming true because um it was one of my biggest dreams to do something with uh, a musician or, or something like that is so yeah this is my biggest dream actually and it will become uh, a big drop i think and that's definitely interesting being able to evoke those emotions both visually and now also you know with the auditory that is fabulous thank you so as we were discussing i know that you know you started mentioning with your, you know, art progression that you started with Photoshop and, you know, now you're getting the printing and kind of, you know, all the framing and the mounting. And that's a huge process. Um, having art that exists in both the physical and the digital space, has that kind of always been the case or did you just start doing digital? Where, how has that path progressed? Well, um, I was very busy in the physical space and then what I, what I said about that, that door that slammed open, um, it was something new for me. And at the beginning, I thought I had to rush also with, with my artwork and I have to mint things. And, but I think after uh, a week or so, I thought, okay, I have to, we have to do this thoughtful, uh, as also as I did in the physical world. world. Um, we have to plan it thoughtful. We have to uh, make a team. Uh, making a team around it and um, absorbing uh, yeah, all the info I can find on communities, etc. So, um, yeah, that's that's the plan. How we work it out, and then we joined, uh, we uh, connected with you guys with the real community, and yeah, that was the thing I want to learn from you guys, also. Definitely getting into yeah. you know, not just now the digital, but like the full blockchain NFT space. Yep. So that's been a fun progression. And you're also, as I mentioned earlier, working on a book launch. So that's something as I was looking into your art and just like kind of, you know, jaw open at your Instagram and your website, seeing all of the things that you've done. Um, you know, you've got this book launch that is happening. And is that something that you can provide us um, some details about? And we'll get that pulled up on the screen as well. So this is your website. And there's the book. There we go. So we've got this book launch coming up. And yeah. tell us about this. Um, we're working. Um, we started 
one year ago. We had a plan to make a, a real exclusive uh, yeah, book. So we started with a plan for a limited edition where we can, uh, when you buy a limited edition, you get also a, a, a finer print, two prints actually. And half a year later, we uh, we planned this coffee table book. There are more than 200 photos, artworks in it, and with some short storylines and quotes. And we will print it next week and we're sending it also. So not, the pre-order was uh, last month and it will be in stores, I think, within a few weeks. So, wow. yeah. That's amazing. So then we'll be able to have your art on our coffee tables. Yeah, it's very cool to own an, a book as an artist. That's, uh, I can't even imagine. Like, that's, I'm excited for you, and I'm not even part of the book. Like, this is fun. Yeah. And this publisher is, he's, he's very, um, he's very amazing because he made a Rijksmuseum book uh, from the museum and also the Van Gogh sketchbook. He made a special uh, edition of it. So it's um, an honor to work with. Um, such a talented guy. He's an artist also, yeah. That is, oh my gosh, it's great when you find people that are, you know, helpful and great to work with and Absolutely. being able to do the things, you know, get your vision out into the world. Like, that's a really amazing thing to see. So, I guess given, you know, kind of the journey that we've gone through so far, and I know this is an introductory conversation to get you introduced to the whale community. So we're not jumping all into the details of your NFT adventures yet. We're going to save that for another time. But just a quick overview, like from your perspective, what gives, you know, makes launching an NFT project the next logical step in your creative progression here? Um, well, uh, several things um, um, the proof of ownership that's for me very important um, because um, I had to deal with a lot of copycats last couple of months of this year um, it was a, a Chinese company who was uh, yeah reproducing my work and even put my uh, sig signature on it so that was very awful so the proof of ownership I think that's very important for me um, also, the, the contact with uh, the collectors and the buyers, because normally now in physical world, um, I work with galleries. And uh, yeah, when they sell a work, uh, it's going to a client, but you can't, you can't follow it. So um, to stay in touch with collectors, I think that's a big plus. Um, and we'll be able to, I would say, you know, in the crypto space, there's a lot of ways to connect with the collectors, which is a really interesting thing and i think that's true even more than perhaps in the physical space because you know people either have to come to the gallery or you know connect through the website but it seems at least from my experience that there's a lot more you know ability to connect even like we're doing you know these interviews we're in the community we've got people in the chat that are asking questions you know and having that interaction with you and so that does be amazing and a big plus absolutely yeah enhances that experience and that's yeah. cool. true that is good so with this i know we've got a couple questions actually in the chat if you've got um time for them oh, absolutely perfect so um just another pineapple wants to know are there any pieces of artwork that as you're looking back you just have to pinch yourself because you you know can't believe that you've created such amazing art um i think the one for paris all right so we'll go back to that and so here's the one for paris so we can take a look at again there are i think thousands of elements what what is related to uh paris life and how she, see, she saw the things and this was a process for, of non-stop working from monday till sunday i think and uh yeah, i think with a, yeah, a big result. I'm very proud of it. And when I look back at it, I think, okay, wow, yeah. And that was, I mean, that's a really, as you mentioned, a really large piece. So, you know, having all of the details and covering so much space, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And so we've got 
that and um, we'll see if anybody else has questions while we're going through. This is your chance, whale community, and we've got, well, it looks like about 50 people in the Discord chat um, all looking. And let's see, we had comments actually, they like the, uh, just another pineapple noted that they think they see a Roman influence in the corner of the piece and like that so we've got some classical i've noticed that in your pieces as we look through you know you have a lot of the nature and a lot of the you know youth the children but there's also a lot of very classical feeling you know aspects here and obviously some yeah. recreations or interpretations of classical pieces but with animation that like look at that not so, that much, just subtle, um, some elements moving. And that's, I think, a really impressive thing to be able to add those subtle elements without overdoing it and causing people to feel a little bit overstimulated. Because with so much going on in your art, that could definitely be a thing that could happen. You know, the, the overstimulation so much to see. And these ones, I think this honestly is my favorite of all of them that I was scrolling through. It's such a graceful piece. You've got the birds, you've got the ballerina, you've got so much like the dancing, even without motion, it feels like the piece is in motion. Thank you. That is yeah. super impressive. So, so yeah, there's a lot of Photoshop, but I want to keep it classic. That's always my goal. It's like a painting. And it, Definitely, I think you have achieved that goal this as well. Obviously, I think I'm just drawn to the dancers, but with the wings there, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is uh, a commissioned piece for Amanda, Amanda Tierney. She's an influencer, actress in America. <laughs> she is, oh my goodness, just gorgeous here with this whole composition. I love it. Um, Thank you. So Morty says that they see some black and white art in there, even though the colors really stand out as well. Um, what is your you know, reasoning for experimenting with the black and white um, versus the color here? I always, yeah, it is something I did um, from the beginning, actually. I like black and white. It's, 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 it gives you more emotions sometimes sometimes a, a work works better in black and white i think and um, I, i'm experimenting a lot with black and white because i don't want to stick to one one particular uh team and i think it's interesting with the black and white because for example if we look at this one you know because you don't have a lot of extra colors to draw your eye away you really focus more i think on the details of the piece itself and less on, you know, the busyness of the color in yeah. some places. So it helps focus. focus. Yeah, it helps to focus, yeah. Those are awesome. And so we've got people that are really excited about the art here in the Discord chat and have been following your Instagram. I posted those um, here in the stream chat. So aside from, you know, the Instagram and the Twitter and your website, which is linked from both of those, are there any other places that fans should be following to keep up with your progress and, you know, what comes next? Um, yeah, subscribe uh, on my newsletter. There will be a lot of, uh, NFT news, uh, communicating a lot of NFT news. So I think that will, would be, uh, best way all right and that is on the website here the get in touch part of it yeah and when you go to nft it's on the right side both yeah next to contact there we go and then you scroll down oh my goodness so here's the link to subscribe and the nft that will be look at the crypto flamingo is already sold out it was a yeah we we did a, a, a small drop, I think, a month, month ago on Rarible. But um, yeah, we have much bigger plans. Wow. So that will be really exciting. And we will definitely have to keep an eye here 
on what you're doing because these are pieces that I think everybody should have in their collection. Like, look at these details. Like, I'm just gonna fangirl a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. um, so just another pineapple also asks, you know, with you venturing into NFTs, is there any chance that we could see some of the future artworks or the NFTs also being animated? Yeah, um, yeah, that's possible. I hope to show uh, some uh, to share some updates soon, or they want, or do I do they want to see it now? What? what sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, we will do in the future, absolutely. So awesome, and that will be exciting to see the progression and deciding for you which ones do you get the animation and which ones don't. It'll be a fun surprise for us. And um, another question that we had is, you know, noting that keeping in contact with your collectors is important. Is there a specific medium in mind? You know, you mentioned the newsletter. Is there, are you going to be participating in any of like the clubhouse chats or, you know, other streaming experiences? Yeah, we, we were planning a clubhouse for sure. Um, and, but also, yeah, during the newsletter, and um, maybe even create a platform on my web on my website to stay in touch with uh, collectors. Absolutely, that is exciting. The community is excited. They <laughs> even noted you gave him a wink, wink, blink, blink, which is something that Whale Shark does when he's hinting, you know, new leaks. So that's wow. yeah. good news there. <laughs> um, with this, I know that, you know, we've had you here for about a half an hour today, which I think is a great start for getting you introduced to the community as a little teaser for what comes next. And I know that we'll be having future streams where we can go into, you know, as you're starting to do the next launches. Is there anything that I haven't covered today that you'd like to share with the community? No, I'm, I'm really excited that we're in touch now and that I have the, yeah. You give me the, the podium to to introduce myself so that's that's really amazing and i want to thank you but that, that's it for now yeah very happy and excited fantastic so, marcel yeah uh, so we're very excited to have you as well and to welcome to you to the space and definitely the whale community is here to help with anything that you need as you get going and we will awesome. be keeping a close eye on your progress so we can participate as well and amazing yeah a big thank you to everybody who joined the chat today and we'll also be getting this on YouTube. So we'll make sure that we're sharing, you know, the word of your amazing, you know, modern surrealism art. And definitely for everybody who's here, check out Marcel's social media, the Twitter, the Instagram, the website. Keep in touch and we will keep an eye on the drops. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Okay, bye.